إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech the best of words are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثة بدعة and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray وكل ضلالة في النار and every uh, and every misguidance and every going astray is in the hellfire. ثم أما بعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have reached again, يعني, what is an immense blessing and gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are able to see these last 10 nights of Ramadan, which we entered on this past Wednesday night. Uh, so we've gone through two of those nights, Wednesday night and Thursday night. And this is the day of Jum'ah, insha'Allah. So these are the best 10 nights of the year. Not the 10 days. The best 10 days are the first 10 days of the Hijjah. But the best 10 nights. Why? Because in them is a night better than a thousand months. So some of these last nights are going to be Laylat al-Qadr. And so we have to ask ourselves, what will we be doing on that night? Will we be sleeping? Will we be watching TV? Will we be just eating? Will we be shooting the breeze? What are we going to be doing on that night? Where, as we're going to see, there's so much veneration still given on this night every year that it passes. The Prophet ﷺ, he used to strive hard during these last 10 nights. He, it was like he was preparing for the ultimate battle. In these last 10 nights, these last 10 days, even he would strive because the month of Ramadan is waning, but the month to give and earn Allah's forgiveness and mercy is still here. Aisha radiallahu anha in the authentic hadith that we find in Bukhari and Muslim, she says, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل العشر شد معزره وأحيا ليله وأيقظ أهله. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, she said that in his last, in these last 10 days, the last 10 nights, he used to uh, tighten his loins, tighten his belt, gird his loins, and he used to wake up his family to pray Qiyam, to worship Allah, and he used to stay up at night. And this doesn't mean all of the night. He prepared himself to work hard and to strive. And this is what we see, my brothers and sisters in Islam. So as Muslims, we should follow our Prophet's example, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we should be great to our families, good to our spouses, good to our children, good to our neighbors. Look for every good deed we can find to do to strive hard, always remembering the reminder of the Prophet أَكْثَرُ ذِكْرَ هَذَا مِنْ لِذَّاتِ الْمَوْتِ To frequently remember the destroyer of pleasures, which is death. And this isn't cynicism or pessimism. This is for us to remember that it could come at any time. But we're still alive. We're still breathing as of right now. If you're hearing this, as I'm speaking this, to still plan to strive hard and exert and look for good deeds to do. And in this month, of course, in these last 10 nights, we have a special night. قال الله عز وجل حامي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حاميم والكتاب المبين إن أنزلناه في ليلة مباركة إن كنا منظرين في فيها يفر يفرق كل أمر حكيم أمر من عندنا إن كنا مرسلين رحمة من ربك 
innahu huwa samiul alim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the quran what means hamim and hamim these are a miracle from allah these aren't names of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam per se they are a miracle that only allah knows their meaning allah said hamim by the manifest book by this quran which was sent and it makes things definitely clear who sent the quran down on a blessed night laylatul qadr in the month of ramadan Verily, we are ever warning mankind that our torment will reach those who disbelieve in our oneness, in the oneness of our Lordship, Allah's Lordship, in the oneness of Allah's worship. The, the, therein, that night is decreed every matter of ordainment, and we will see what this means. As a command, or this Qur'an, we are ever sending messengers as a mercy from your Lord. Verily, He is, Allah is the all-seer, the all-knower. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, it is the night of Qadr, the Laylat al-Qadr, in which the Qur'an was revealed. Fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim. On this night therein, every decreed matter of uh, every decreed matter of ordainments was revealed. Meaning, on that night, the destiny of all the creatures for the coming year is decreed. It is written on this night and revealed to the angels what will happen till next Laylat al-Qadr in the following year. So when we're 1441 Hijri, it will be 1441 Ramadan, uh, 1442 Ramadan uh, next year, inshallah, Laylatul, Laylatul Qadr. So on this night, it is written for the next year, who will live, who will die, who will be happy, who will be sad, who will be saved, who will be doomed, who will be prosperous, who will go broke, who will be destined for paradise, for Jannah, who will be destined for the hellfire, who will be given honor, who will be humiliated, and everything else that Allah wills. On this night, the destiny of all the creatures is transferred from Allah al mahfud on the, the, the preserved tablet. On this night, destiny is shown to the angels. This qadr, qadr, many people will say it's just power, but it means veneration, it means honor. A venerated night, an honorable night, where one worships his creator and becomes a, a man or a woman of honor. So Allah dec Allah's decrees are decided. And although they were written before the creation, they are given to the angels on this night. So it is Laylat al-Qadr because it has a great effect. It's a valuable night, an honorable night, a night of dignity, a night of honor, and status, high status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because so many sins will be forgiven on it and so many faults will be concealed. And Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, وَمَنْ قام ليلة القدر إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in this authentic hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, he said صلى الله عليه وسلم, whoever stays up during ليلة القدر, whoever is worshiping Allah in prayer, reading the Quran, doing tasbih and takbir and tahleel and tahmid and the likes of these, saying even سبحان الله الحمد لله لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر. And making the du'a, we're going to see that Aisha was told to make during these last 10 nights, seeking Laylat al-Qadr. He said, whoever stays up during Laylat al-Qadr, out of faith and hoping for its reward, out of faith, iman, true iman, that Allah is the owner of the heavens and the earth, and Allah holds the ticket because He owns His mercy to let you enter Jannah or to send you to the fire. And hoping for the reward of seeking Allah's face and pleasure on this night hoping for the reward of forgiveness and mercy, hoping for the reward of Jannah and being saved from the hellfire. Whoever stays up out of faith and in hope of earning reward, then all of his or her previous minor sins will be forgiven. Again, for the major sins, we need to make tawbah. We need to repent and repent and repent and beg Allah for forgiveness. According to Ibn Abbas, عنهما, one of the Sahaba, one of the most versed Sahaba in tafsir of the Qur'an, on this night, the Qur'an was sent down by Allah completely. All right, because Allah, He wrote down everything that was going to happen. He had the pen write everything that was going to happen from the, begin from the time He created the pen and told it to write all the way to the end of time. All right, so on this night, the Qur'an was sent down by Allah at one time from Al-Loh Al-Mahfud, the preserved tablets, to Bayt Al-Izzah in the first heavens. And it was revealed to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in stages over 23 years from when he was 40 until when he passed 
Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was 63. And you find this in Tafsir Ibn Kathir. So we know, my brothers and sisters, as we're going to review, that this is a night better than a thousand months. We know it's a blessed night. We know on this night, the angels and the Ruh, Jibreel alayhi salam, they descend and they come down by Allah's, with Allah's blessings and Allah's mercy as when the Quran is recited and they circle, the, they surround the people studying the Quran, reciting the Quran, wanting to learn the Quran and they beat their wings for the one who's sincerely seeking the knowledge. They beat their wings and this is something of course we can't see but just if you had to just even know about it, think about it, hear about it, subhanAllah, they beat their wings out of respect for the one who is choosing to worship Allah and seek Laylatul Qadr. On this night is peace. It is safe from shaitan. He can't do no harm or evil on this night. And this is a, a tafsir that was in Ibn Kathir as well that uh, Mujahid was quoted for saying. On this night, many people are saved from the punishment because of what they do to try to worship Allah, the punishment of the hellfire. So Allah, He has in every night that those He gives ataqa min al nar, He saves them from the hellfire every night during Ramadan, especially during these last nights. On this night, the angels are informed of what will, what is to happen, uh, even though Allah already knows it. My brothers and sisters in Islam, the hadith about staying up with Allah, من قام ليلة القدر إيمانا واحتسابا whoever stays up means it means believing in Allah's promise of the reward seeking the reward with no other aim or purpose not to show off not to say you did so but to get Allah's present uh, Allah's present and gift of Jannah being saved from the hellfire and it being better than a thousand months Allah subhanahu wa taala He said أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أنزلناه في ليلة القدر Indeed, it is we who sent it down on Laylatul Qadr, on the night of decree, the night of honor. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ And what will tell you what Laylatul Qadr is? Laylatul Qadr خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ Laylatul Qadr is a night better than 1,000 months. If you take that and just divide that by 12 months in a year, okay? This is over 83.3 years. So imagine how long we've been living. If you're 41 or 42, you've lived half of the time. And worshiping Allah on this one night, seeking forgiveness and mercy, reading the Quran, standing up in prayer, is better than double your lifespan if you're 41, 42. If you haven't even reached 83 yet, then you can still worship Allah and it would be better than your whole life of worship if you actually did it and it was Laylatul Qadr. SubhanAllah. This alone should encourage us, this great virtue should encourage all Muslims to strive to worship Allah, standing in prayer, even if the feet hurt, to seek the pleasure and the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So where will you be? What will you be doing? And what will you be saying? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we should know and remind ourselves from Mughira, and this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari, that he says, uh, that he uh, he saw that the Prophet ﷺ used to offer the night prayers and his feet would become swollen so much so that he said to him, O Messenger of Allah ﷺ, you've been forgiven your faults. You're going to be given the highest of Jannah. You don't need to do this to yourself. And he said, أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Should I at least not be a grateful servant? We should never think we've done enough. Look at what our Prophet ﷺ, Al-Uswatul Hasana, the best example for mankind. Look what he used to do even with the promises of forgiveness and mercy and Jannah. May Allah make us of those who can stand in Ramadan seeking Allah's face, seeking Allah's pleasure. And we should seek this without a doubt in the last 10 days of Ramadan, the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And again, there is some uh, a hadith that mentioned it was the 23rd or the 25th. And you see a lot of people focusing on the 27th. My brothers and sisters in Islam, seek Laylatul Qadr at all times, knowing that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, تَحَرَّوا لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ فِي فِي الْوِتْرِ مِنْ الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِمْ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ Even though we have the authentic hadith in Bukhari, where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, seek Laylatul Qadr on the odd numbered nights of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So we should seek it at that time. But let me tell you, my brothers and sisters in Islam, that we should know that some of the scholars thought that Laylatul Qadr moves 
every uh, year and doesn't come on a specific night each year. This was Imam al nawawis view. Some of the uh, uh, scholars said Allah has concealed this night of his, from His slaves, so you should tr strive to seek it and strive hard and worship just as He concealed the hour of Jum'ah, for example, and so on. The dua, when the dua is accepted, etc. Ya Abad Allah, strive hard during these nights and during these last days to give in charity. This is a great deed to do, give in charity. Support the, the school, the masajid, those who are in need. Uh, to, to do extra prayers, to read the Qur'an, to make tasbih and takbir and tahmeed and tahleel and the, the likes of these things. To call your parents, to check on them, to do good deeds for your neighbors, your loved ones, your brothers and sisters in Islam, anybody that you can do a good deed for. Ya Abad Allah, strive hard and seek Laylatul Qadr. Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what do you think of I, if I were to witness Laylatul Qadr, what should I say? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught her. He told her to say, he told her if you see Laylatul Qadr, then you say, Allahumma innaka afoon tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Again, just for you to hear it, Allahumma innaka afoon Tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. And a third time, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. And this dua is posted on the Islamic Center of Manteca's website for you to be able to print. And it's transliterated so you can memorize it, inshaAllah, and call upon it, uh, call upon Allah with it, my brothers and sisters in Islam. It is not essential to know you caught the night. Point, the point is to strive hard, to be sincere and worship. And mind you, if it's in the last, if Ramadan is only 29 days, then the last 10 odd number nights really shifts, if you wanted to really think about it. So all of these 10 nights, not knowing when Laylatul Qadr is, knowing the different views of when it could be, etc. Strive hard on every night, even the e what you think are the even numbered ones. Strive hard. These are the last 10 nights and we don't know if we'll ever get to see the likes of them again. The venerated night of Laylatul Qadr, Khairun min alfi shahr, better than a thousand months. My brothers and sisters in Islam, do not lose out on it. Some brief mentioning, my brothers and sisters in Islam on Zakat al Fitr. It is obligatory upon every individual Muslim, due to the statement of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa made Zakat al Fitr obligatory during Ramadan as one saw which comes out to uh, some, يعني, depending on how you do it, because it's really a volume that you measure with your hands. But let's say uh, seven pounds or so of dried dates, or one saw of barley, or wheat, or, uh, or uh, flour, or uh, rice, and the likes of these, whatever the staple foods are. And this was made obligatory upon the slave and the free man, upon the male and the female, upon the young and the old. It purifies the fasting of the, one, of the person who may be said useless or non-beneficial speech during the month. And it allows other Muslims to have some food for the day of Fitr, Yom, uh, Eid al-Fitr, the day of uh, Fitr, the day of breaking the fast. All right. So Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he narrates from, and we find this in Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah's uh, collection of a hadith and al-Hakim, he graded it as Sahih. فَرَضَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم زكاة الفطر طهرة للصائم من ال من اللعو والرفث من ال من اللعو والرفث عفوا. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he made uh, Ibn Abbas he said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم prescribed and made obligatory zakat al fitr as a purification for the fasting person from لعو and from رفث from empty speech and obscene talk and as food for the poor. If anyone pays it after the prayer, if anyone pays it, وإذا وَمَنْ أَدَّهَا بَعْدَ الصَّلَاةِ فَهِيَ صَدَقَةٌ مِّنَ الصَّدَقَاتِ And if somebody were to pay this after Eid prayer, after the time of Eid prayer, then this would just be counted as a sadaqah like the other sadaqat, like the other ones. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us also remember, as we're mentioning this, that Allah said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ let us remember that Allah said what means, O you who believe, a call where all believers, all those who want to be mu'mineen with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be responding and listening very attentively, ready to put it into practice. Fasting was prescribed upon you 
like it was prescribed on those before you so you may achieve taqwa. The purpose of the fast wasn't just to stay away from food and drink. Actually, Allah does not need that from you. If you also cannot stay away from anger and obscene words and uh, obscene deeds or acts of filth and acts of uh, um, obscenity or empty words, empty talk, etc. So the, uh, this is just a reminder for us. So back to the zakat al-fitr, it is an amount and a type. You cannot give it as money to somebody to spend the money as they want. Nor should you give it to them to go buy food for themselves because they may not. And this is an obligation. So you shouldn't just send the money where you don't know where it's going. When it's collected by those who are responsible, it is used to purchase food and then the food is distributed. Again, before the Eid prayer, usually delaying it, but because of the coronavirus this time, we started collecting it a little bit earlier and the recipients are those who are in need. They have more right to it than other people. Obligatory in the land you reside, so we always take some of it and buy food here to pass. But because we have the excess of zakat al-fitr, we send a lot of it to make uh, times for the other uh, Muslims, inshallah, to around the world who are struggling and suffering to have food and ease their conditions on this day. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, with the Eid, we still have takbir to say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillah alhamd. Say the takbir very frequently, all the way up until you pray Eid prayer. Now this year, because we may not have the Eid prayer, because we may not have the Eid prayer, my brothers and sisters in Islam, then we might not have it as a congregation, then you should pray it in your homes as a jama'ah with no khutbah. And this is from the jamhur, the consensus opinion from the scholars, that you would still pray it and we will send out some type of reminder for how you, or to remind you how to pray it uh, as we do in congregation, but you'll pray it that way again, uh, with no uh, khutbah, no one has to worry about a khutbah, and inshallah, you will just pray it as a family together with the seven takbirat in the first uh, uh, rak'ah and the five extra takbirat in the second rak'ah. Wallahu alam, and we will send this. So, my brothers and sisters in Islam, remember in these last nights that we could be seeing the great one of these nights, inshallah, the best nights of all the year, the best night of all the year, a night which is better than a thousand months, Laylatul Qadr. So strive hard in reading the Quran, in staying up for prayer, in giving sadaqah, in giving charity, in exerting yourself and waking up your family to do the same. Strive hard to remember Allah and beg for forgiveness, to earn His mercy and to earn His forgiveness. Remember this, my brothers and sisters in Islam, because we may not see the last, uh, we may not see another Ramadan. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Eid is a very special day. And it is a day that we should all rejoice in even if we cannot gather, even if we cannot go see other family members, even if we cannot pray together and listen to a beneficial lecture, even if we cannot uh, go and have our fun times in the parks. It's still possible for you to make it a day of enjoyment for you and your families, inshallah. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma ballighna Laylatul Qadr. May, we, may Allah allow us to be of those who witness Laylatul Qadr and earn His forgiveness. Allahumma ja'anna min utuqa'i shahr Ramadan. May Allah make us from those who have earned salvation from the hellfire in this blessed month of Ramadan. My brothers and sisters in Islam, seek the face and the pleasure of Allah by exerting yourself during these last 10 nights, these last nights of what, what is in them and these days in general because we may not be promised another Ramadan. And only Allah knows what's gonna be in our decree. Remember the angels are being told what will happen to you the following year. So inshallah, if we're worshiping Allah, Allah will bestow on us His mercy, His grace, His forgiveness, His guidance, and most of all, tathbeet ala deen, tathbeet, firmness upon His religion. And this is what we ask for Allah, from Allah to live and die as Muslims and to be resurrected as believers, as mu'mineen, to be granted salvation, crossing the bridge over Jahannam and make it into Jannah, insha'Allah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, remember the sajda. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدْ فَأَكْثِرُ الدُّعَاءِ 
that the Prophet ﷺ, he said that a closest a person is to Allah, to His Creator, even though Allah is above the heavens and the earth, without a doubt, as He revealed in the Qur'an. And there's nothing else to prove otherwise. Alright? He istawa, He ascended above His throne. Alright? But Allah, the closest you can be to Allah, to His pleasure, to His rahmah, to His mercy, to His uh, maghfirah, to His forgiveness, to, to His being pleased with you to the utmost, is in sajda. So he, the Prophet ﷺ commanded us, so make more dua there. Let this time be where you realize to slow down in the prayer. It's not about just praying it and said you did it. Make your sajda longer. Glorify Allah in it. Praise Him in it as He deserves to be praised. Ask Him for forgiveness. Ask Him to accept your repentance. Ask Him for Jannah and to be saved from the hellfire. Make your dua in sajda and make it a longer sajda. Calm on the seven bones, the forehead and the nose, the two palms of the hands, the forearm and the, sh- uh, the elbow should be off the ground. So the two palms of the hands, the forehead and the nose, the two knees and the toes touching the ground, preferably bent to face the qibla as well. So just a final advice, take time in that sajda. It's the pillar of the prayer. When you steal from that shed- sajda, shaitan is stealing away from your prayer. That sajda is the closest you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So increase in dua in it. And may Allah allow us to see Laylatul Qadr and allow us to see another Ramadan together to worship Him and glorify Him and praise Him as He deserves to be worshipped and glorified and praised. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.